Fox Sports. We are Fox We are Christmas. Saturday afternoon baseball at Miller Park, Milwaukee. What a great day for the grand old game today. It's the Cubs and the Brewers. The second game of this three game series and Milwaukee is rolling along. The Brewers sitting there 11 games over 500 in first place in the National League Central. The final day in the month of May. And hi everybody. We welcome you from Miller Park alongside Bill Schroeder. I'm Brian Anderson. We'll hear from Sophia Minard in a little bit as well. Now the Brewers now have nine straight games where they have at least 10 hits. Their offense is rolling. Tough pitcher on the mound today for the Cubs and Jason Hamill, but there are a few players individually who are having some breakout seasons for the Brew Crew. Yeah, and Ron Renicki certainly has been able to put his guys in a position to succeed and straight changing a lot of around has helped a lot of guys. I think it's helped Ryan Braun a little bit. Not the power hitter that he was and will continue to be as time goes on, but no coincidence that when Ryan Braun swings the bat, good things are going to happen for the Brewers. They've been winning because of the offense has been very good. You know, Ron Renicki has been waiting for this offense to click since the beginning of the season. It took about seven weeks, but here it is. Chris Davis finally starting to swing the bat like he did at the end of last year. The good approach. Everybody been talking about approach for the last couple of days, but driving the baseball to the opposite field, getting pitches to pull. You don't need to worry about approach with Carlos Gomez. He's such a good athlete. He doesn't have to worry about a good approach. Driving the ball in the center field, getting on base, stealing bases. This offense right now is as good as it's been all season long. A lot of hitting streaks. They have matched a franchise record, and they have Willie Peralta, who's been pitching like an ace, on the mound this afternoon. Craig and Augie will talk Willie Peralta and Jason Hamill when we continue.
Cubs and Brewers on the way here from Miller Park in our pitching matchup today, a rematch of the April 27th game in which Jason Hamill beat Willie Peralta. 4-0 was the final in that one. Willie Peralta brings the fifth best ERA in the National League into this matchup. A 2-1-2 as we welcome back. I'm Craig Kishon alongside Jerry Augustine. A very tough 2-1 to -one loss absorbed by Willie Peralta's last time out against the Miami Marlins. I guess if your ERA is low, your record's 4-4, four and four, you got to absorb some of those tough losses. You know, we've talked so much the last few days about the adjustments and the approach that the hitters have done. But as a pitcher, sometimes you have to do the same thing. In Miami, Willie did not have his great fastball, the good two-seam, good seam, four-seam fastball. He had to use his changeup, and he had to use his breaking ball. But yet, he was able to go out and give the Brewers a quality start, keep him in the ball game. This is a maturity of a young pitcher, and I'm going to tell you what, he's just adding every, each and every time to his credentials. And he'd love to meet the Cubs here this afternoon. Hamill 4-0 lifetime against Milwaukee. We are ready. We're going to have the lineups. First pitch all set for you as the Brook crew goes for their fourth overall win in a row. money on all your home improvement needs at Menards. By Miller Lite, now in the original can, it's Miller time. By Toyota, let's go places. And by Southwest Airlines, find our fares online only at southwest.com. Big crowd still filing in Miller Park, expecting a sellout today. Just getting their last minute tailgating in before they head in. And what a day for baseball, 77 degrees. Beautiful afternoon here. Going to be some shadows. Could be tough on the hitters. Rick Renteria, season one as the Cub skipper, and it has not gone well. 19 wins, 33 losses. Worst record in the National League. His batting order today is brought to you by Associated Bank. He's got Bonifacio leading off and playing third base. Junior Lake followed by Anthony Rizzo, who's back in there this afternoon. Middle of the order is Castro, Sherholtz, and Coughlin. John Baker, Darwin Barney, and Jason Hamill round it out, and they will match up against Willie Peralta. Yeah, Willie, uh, fifth best earned run average in all the National League at 2.12. He's got an opponent batting average at about 250. A 4-4 four and four record. You see his numbers this year at Miller Park. Very good, but a little bit higher than his overall earned run average. A 3-2 and two record. Had a rough month of May wins and loss-wise. 1-3, but a 169 earned run average. 
Well, before the ball game today, we had a chance to catch up with Ron Renicky. His thoughts on his starting pitcher this afternoon. Uh, what I'm seeing is uh, the guy that we saw last year, really the second half, uh, consistent, um, more in control of him, his emotions, which which got him in a lot of innings last year. Uh, in his bad innings, he's only given up one or two runs now, which is uh, really nice. Uh, he hasn't had his good stuff, I don't think, in command for probably the last two, three outings, but he still kept us in ball games, still allowed us a chance to win. And the thoughts of the skipper and Peralta coming off back-to-back -back losses on the road. Despite not allowing more than two earned runs in either one of those two starts, he lost to the Braves on the 19th of May and then a loss at Miami. Six innings and only one run allowed, the lone loss in that series. So he is going along well even when he's not on his A game. And his first pitch of the ball game is up and away. And away we go from Miller Park with Bonifacio leading off. Peralta's first bolt of the day was at 95 miles an hour. Hasn't been a question about his velocity, his stuff. His last win, however, came against the Cincinnati Reds on May 2nd. That was his first start in the month of May when he went eight shutout as Bonifacio fouls it off. And Rock, for two offenses today, you certainly uh, look out there and like you do at Wrigley Field, you check the winds. When you're at Miller Park in a three o'clock start, you check the shadows and it could be tough on the hitters today. Yeah, when you have a guy like Willie Peralta out there in the mound and you have shadows forming out there in the field and right now they're pretty bad when everything is uh, in the shade you have that batter's eye back there all brightly lit up makes it very difficult kind of plays tricks on the eyes so a power pitcher certainly you would think has the advantage in conditions like this two excellent pitchers in Hamill and Peralta as Willie misses up high and it's three balls and two strikes on the Cubs leadoff hitter as Craig mentioned a rematch with Peralta and Hamill Willie pitched well in that game, but lost. Hamill was better. Went seven innings and three runs against the Cubs at Miller Park in late April. On a Fascio to short, and Segura just in time to get the speedy third baseman for the first out of the ball game. Yeah, the uh, Menards Brewers defense. The Brewers right now fourth in the National League in team fielding percentage. They have a fielding percentage at nine. 85. They committed only 31 errors so far this year. You got Lyle Overbay back at first base. Scooter Jeanette at second. You got the right hander out there in the mound for the Cubs. And Jonathan Lucroy back behind home plate. Calling balls and strikes today is Angel Campos and the three man umpiring crew on the bases, led by the crew chief Jerry Meals over at first base. Paul Immel and Jordan Baker out there as well. The free swinging Junior Lake falls behind. Lake batting second back in center field again today. A little bit of a change in the lineup for Renteria with Bonifacio making his first start over at third base. He's got Rizzo back in there at first base. And right now the Cubs like Junior Lake in center field. Well, they like his power potential. Six home runs, 19 RBIs is it, and a 258 batting average. High strikeout type guy, but he's young. And down he goes. Peralta wipes him out quickly. 96 mile an hour fastball. Two up and two down for Peralta to start the first. Yeah, good to see Willie, you know, being able to command the fastball early in this game. And that start against Miami really had a tough time with the fastball. Actually, the change up and the slider were two of his best pitches in that game. A devastating fastball that two seam power sinker for Willie Peralta and it comes in there at 96 miles an hour. That is a rare weapon in the major leagues to have movement and velocity and there it is again at 95 and it's in there for strike one on Rizzo. Anthony Rizzo got the day off yesterday his first of the season had played in the first 51 games. Hadn't had a day off since last August. Did not have the matchup in his favor with Marco Estrada on the mound yesterday. And Estrada got the win yesterday. The Brewers beat the Cubs 11 to 5, banging out 16 hits. 
in yesterday's victory. Marco Estrada beat Travis Wood. Estrada now five and two with the win. He's at a 403 ERA. Travis Wood, who had been pitching very well, suffered his fifth loss. One, two, and Rizzo swings and misses. Could be one of those days for the pitchers. Peralta, a couple of K's in the first. Now the Brewers coming up. A couple of strikeouts, and now the Brewers coming up against Jason Hamill. Gene Segura back in that leadoff spot. It'll be followed by Braun, then Luke Roy, Gomez, Davis, and Jeanette in the middle with Mark Reynolds, Lyle Overbay, and Willie Peralta rounding out the Associated Bank Milwaukee Brewers starting lineup today. Tough customer on the mound today, Rock, and 31 year old Jason Hamill. A 2-2-5 ERA career against Milwaukee, and he's never lost against the Brewers. Yeah, 4-0 in five starts, and one of those wins came right here on April 27. Seven shutout innings for Hamill. Sinker slider guy. Right-handed batters have a difficult time against Hamill, hitting only 167 so far this year. Hamill deals to Gene Segura. Hamill overall is five and three with a 308 earned run average. Segura back in that leadoff spot for the ninth consecutive game and hitting 368 as a leadoff hitter since this lineup change that we've been talking about. And this offense is just rolling right now. Matched a franchise record with the extra base hits and double digit hit totals. Tying the uh, 82 season in 2011. If they go for double digit hits today, the Brewers will set a new franchise record all alone, the 2014 club. That's a tall order against this guy. This guy out there on the mound, Jason Hamill. Outstanding start to his season. Very difficult to elevate his pitches. He throws a good sinker, a slider. An occasional change up and curveball mixes it up very well. And just like Willie Peralta, the Brewer hitters might have a tough time seeing the baseball today based on the shadows here at Miller Park. Hamill has just one win in the month of May, but that was against the Yankees. And he beat Masahiro Tanaka that day as Segura defensive swing and a strikeout to start Hamill's afternoon. Now let's check out the Cubs defense brought to you by Menards there. It turned the first few in double plays in all the National League, only 38 of them. They're very strong up the middle today with Starlin Castro and Darwin Barney. Bonifacio over there at third base today. He can play anywhere. He plays second, play him in the outfield. Very versatile switch hitter for the Cubs. Well, we've seen Bonifacio at second, which is where he was last night. He got some starts in center field when the Brewers were at Wrigley. Here's Ryan Braun and first pitch strike from Hamill. 
LeBron not only has great numbers against the Chicago Cubs and he has a current 15 game hitting streak against the Cubs. He also has good numbers against Jason Hamill lifetime. He's five for 11. Last night Ryan Braun started the scoring barrage a two run home run in the first inning off Travis Wood hit the top of the wall and bounced out Powerball home run number eight for Ryan Braun last night and his first here at Miller Park of the season and first for him a three hit night for Braun and pitch right about there out away from boy he's been feasting on pitches fastballs particularly out away from him. You would figure Jason Hamill is going to try to pound him inside. Both of these pitchers today, good sinkers. They have something on them. And you figure both of them are going to try to establish the inside part of the plate. A ball and two strikes on Braun. And down he goes. Breaking ball, back to back K's. And Jason Hamill with. 54 strikeouts and 64 in the third innings coming in. I mean, that's not bad, but not considered to be a big strikeout pitcher. More of a ground ball type pitcher. Off to a good start today. Good breaking pitch. Two up, two down. Hamill will face Jonathan Lucroy, who enters play today as one of the top hitters in the National League. He's currently seventh in the league in batting. Lucroy hitting 323. He's tied with Carlos Gomez. Troy Tulowitzki is the league leader in that category, hitting 360. Lucroy with a couple of doubles, 22 runs batted in. You can also find his name in the doubles category in the National League. He is one behind Goldschmidt and Utley. Currently third in the National League in doubles with 21. Goldschmidt of the Diamondbacks, Utley of the Phillies with 22. Bottom line, having a pretty good start to his season. No question. Very consistent. Only really hasn't gone in a long stretch without hits. And because of that, Ron Reddick, he plays him at first base against left handed starters. Yeah, that was the matchup last night. It was Lucroy at first, Maldonado caught, and Ricky Weeks at second. Brewers had four players with three hits last night. Two of them can't find their way into the lineup today. What do you got to do in this league to get in the lineup, Brock? As Lucroy serves one to right, a base hit. A two out single for Lucroy. The problem is you have guys that have to be in the lineup because they're swinging the bats well. Scooter Jeanette, Lyle Overbay starting to swing it. It's all about Ron Renicky putting his offense and his players in positions to succeed. And it really doesn't matter who's out there in the mouth of Luke Roy, he's going to hit no matter what. Taliban on, a base runner, the game's first hit for Carlos Gomez. Surging at the plate. And most of that damage coming as a cleanup hitter. Gomez on a 10 game hit streak. That's the longest hitting streak of the season. He also had the longest hitting streak last year at 14. And not too many of those hits. Let's talk about a hitting streak or infield hits. He's driving the baseball. Mm -hmm. I mean, gap to gap down the lines. And he looks like he's enjoying that cleanup spot. This is his eighth game batting cleanup. In the previous seven, a 481 batting average has eight runs batted in in those seven games. And that one tied him up. Fastball from Hamill, a lot of movement. Quickly, no balls and two strikes. And we're already seeing some very awkward swings in this first inning from both sides. Yes, yeah, Segura had one, Gomez just had one. Rizzo in the top of the inning. No balls, two strikes, two outs. Gomez made the All Star team for the first time in his career last year and ha is having another All Star caliber season. 
323 average, 11 homers, 31 driven in. We're watching Gomez around the batting cage. You would think it, from time to time he'd come to the ballpark not feeling all that good, kind of down. Uh, he was just chirping around that batting cage, taking <laughs> BP, kind of doing some play by play on the balls that he would hit. And guys around the batting cage just looking at each other. How does he do it? Full of life. There goes Lucroy, and Gomez fouls it away. That's a great combination of power and speed for Gomez. He has. The big uh, slugging percentage, 590 on base percentage at 395. Currently in the big leagues, only Gomez and Brian Dozier of the Twins with 10 or more homers and 10 or more stolen bases. There goes Luke Croy. Gomez fouls it back. The Brewer catcher getting a sprint in with two away. Like he needs the extra running, right? Luke Roy's been in the game. I don't know. How, when's the last time he missed a game? Whether behind the plate or at first base. Yeah, he's, he's been out there every day in this stretch. We'll do it again. Another one, two, and they'll check on Luke Roy this time. Well, the Brewers are hopeful that Aramis Ramirez will return Tuesday or Wednesday. He's going to go out on a two day minor league rehab tomorrow. He'll be in Appleton. Get your tickets early <laughs> for the Wisconsin Timber Rattlers. There he goes again, and Gomez fouls another one away. Wind sprint number three for Gomez, or rather for Luke Croy. Back he goes to first. It's going to be tough for him to score on a double now. <laughs> like it wasn't, wouldn't have been initially, but even more so now. Garth Ward's first base coach with the instructions for this next offering. Luke Croy will steal the base every now and then. He has two this year. And now Hamill wants a new set of signs. It's been pretty much all fastballs to Gomez in this at bat. Trying to get him to chase up in the strike zone. And maybe Hamill thinking breaking pitch. Who knows? Hamill coming off a start against the San Diego Padres his last time out. Took a loss in that game. He went five and two thirds with three earned runs. And there is the breaking ball fouled away. Hamill had an issue with his pitching hand rock against the Yankees, and it kind of showed up in a delayed reaction a little bit later. Yeah, next start. One two pitch Gomez fouls it off again. What did that bat going here? Yeah first at bat you know first hitter he faced against the Yankees in two starts ago got hit in the hand with a in a come with a comebacker in that game that the Cubs beat Tanaka. He finished that game he was able to get that victory started the next time but after about three or four innings the hand started to give him some problems so we'll see how it affects him today. Here's a one two Gomez lays off top pitch close one two and two the count. Pitch number 11 coming to Gomez. Two outs bottom first Luke Roy still at first and Gomez. Fly ball right field sure holds. Makes the play in fair territory. Good battle though for Gomez. Inning over. Brewers fail to score. And we head to the second.
second inning. Brewers have a hit. Peralta back at it. By the way, the Felco All-Star voting update. Brewers have eight players on this year's ballot. You can cast your vote for them at Brewers.com. And we've heard from a number of fans that are maxing out their votes. That's what we like to hear. Aramis Ramirez currently second. Braun currently third among outfielders. So if the All-Star game was coming up, they close voting. He would be an All-Star starter. Certainly like to push Lucroy higher than fourth. And Gomez higher than sixth two deserving candidates as well at this point so we'll be staying on that as we fall in line for the midsummer classic at target field in minneapolis this year that'll be fun yeah you're going to the game I'm special going. invitation yep i'm going nice yeah it's gonna be fun hanging out with the cool kids again as I, uh, usual i had a good time in the all-star game here in milwaukee did some interviews and uh, boy, there's a lot, lot going on around the uh, All-Star game. You know, Monday and Tuesday. If you're a baseball fan, that's the place to be. Peralta back at work. Starlin Castro leads off for the Cubs. Big numbers against Willie Peralta. Two of those nine hits are home runs. Castro's been a tough out for Brewer pitching in general. He's having a pretty good year. There's been a, a little frustration with him at the shortstop position for the Cubs. But he's hitting 276, seven homers, has 26 runs batted in. He's made eight errors at shortstop. He's one of those guys that's going to make a couple of tremendous plays. Plays you would think he'd never be able to make, and they don't have a ground ball roll right up his glove on a two hopper. Sometimes a concentration issue for Castro, but. Boy, his career numbers against Willie Peralta pretty good. He's hitting almost 500 against Willie. Good fastball hitter, no matter how hard you're throwing it. And like Peralta, Castro from the Dominican Republic. He's still young. He's only 24. It's one of the faces of the Cubs franchise. They are pushing their chips to the middle, so to speak, with Rizzo and Castro. Castro signed an eight year deal. This is year three of that contract I believe that's a deal that will run through the 2020 season possibly. All right, that's a long contract mm -hmm. man. I'll tell you what can happen. I guess that's a risk for both the organization and the player. I mean if Castro just absolutely goes off the next couple of years he's kind of. Playing at a discount on the flip side of that if. Injury props up to Castro, then the Cubs are going to have to wear it. I made the All Star team twice 2011 2012, but had his worst career year last year. And Peralta puts that by him. Foul tip into the middle of Lucroy, and a, another strikeout for Willie Peralta. That's his third. And his third in a row. All fastballs to Starling Castro. So both of these pitchers really. Trying to establish fastball here in the shadows here at Miller Park today. Really got behind him three and one, just blew fastballs by him. It's nice to be able to do that. Mm. Nice to have that in the toolbox. Peralta, big and strong, he can keep that fastball in the mid to upper 90s all game long. First offering to Sherholtz is outside. Sure holds homers last night. That was off Estrada. Marco gave up three runs in six innings last night. Cubs had ten hits in last night's game. A lot of those came late. They scored two runs in the ninth. Brewers had them at arm's length most of the night. Yeah, it was kind of a struggle for Marco last night. I mean, really had some men on base. Really wasn't able to establish his changeup. I mean. Pitches that you think you have just about every time out, but you know, didn't get many swings on it. Wasn't able to throw up for strikes, but was able to battle through six innings. Still a pretty good start. One two pitch. Sure holds. Just got a piece. Fouls it away. 
Yeah, yeah. Brewers pitching staff has to feel good about what this offense is doing behind them. They've been and waiting for some run support for some time. Yeah, it works both ways, right? right. There's been uh, some pockets of the schedule where the Brewers have not swung the bat well. Willie Peralta has been on the wrong side of that for a few starts, especially in the month of May. Seems to be the one guy right now that's getting very little run support. But it comes and it goes and you're hoping one picks up the other and so far for the most part it has. The Brewers open the day with 33 wins. 33 and 22 11 games over 500. Yeah, one of the Giants with more wins than the National League actually in all baseball. This is not good. Ron Renneke and athletic trainer Dan Wright on their way out. Willie Peralta. Looking like something's bothering him here. There's a pained look on Peralta's face. See if we can pick something up his last offering. Just hanging that arm down there and kind of uh, loping off the mound. That doesn't look good. Body language says a lot. He might be saying one thing to Dan Wright and Ron Renneke, but the body language speaks volumes. That's what they were concerned about. Now they will be very cautious and conservative with Peralta. So whatever he said to Dan Wright, he has uh, bought himself. Some more time here. Well, that's a wipe of the brow. Now we'll have to keep an eye on Willie the rest of the start. Brewers have been very fortunate. They've only used six starters, and really, that's with an asterisk. They haven't put one of their original five starters on the DL. Gallardo rolled his ankle a couple of starts ago, and Jimmy Nelson came up to make a spot start, but they've been healthy in that category. Broken bat right to Overbay and Peralta with the second out. Yeah, White with a brow, but I don't think the Brewers are out of the woods yet with Willie. He still doesn't look right. There we go to first base. Not sure what uh, was giving him some problems, if anything. I don't put the Brewers behind the eight ball today. They really don't have a long reliever other than Tyler Thornburg. He pitched in last night's game. Here's Chris Coughlin, former rookie of the year in the National League. Makes his first start of the series. Didn't see him yesterday. Came up with the Marlins, now with the Cubs. And that one's in the air. Left field, Chris Davis in the sun. The glorious sun. He makes a catch. And that will retire the size. So Peralta, a little bit of a scare. Six up, six down. Chris Davis leads off.
Hey, in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, great to have you with us today. No score as we head to the Brewers' second inning, and Chris Davis ready to lead off. Well, what a difference uh, a couple of weeks makes in Chris Davis. Early in the season, you can see the front shoulder flying open, body going forward, and that really makes him vulnerable to a pitch away. Watch, the shoulder's gone, the head's just kind of flying out there, and Davis with a swing and a miss. But lately, what he's been doing is staying back, Trusting his hands, allowing the baseball to travel. Look how well he is balanced after his swing. Really not jumping out, staying back. His hands are lightning quick through the strike zone, and it's all about confidence for Davis. Well, Davis over his last eight games, his batting average at 452 during that stretch. He has four home runs and eight RBIs in those eight games. And Davis lines one to left. There's another hit. Thinking about two. Turns first. He's on his way. And he is going to be out at second base. Davis inexplicably trying to turn that into a double. Coughlin was there in plenty of time. I'm not sure he saw him right away. Yeah, he was deep out there in the corner. A pretty good throw out there from left. But you don't want to make the first out at second. I mean, certainly, I mean, two outs, nobody on. You might want to risk it, try to get into scoring position, but they'd be satisfied with a single. Pretty good throw by Coglin. Picks it up on the backhand, and Cubs able to get him easily. Darwin Barney with the tag. Well, Davis does extend his hitting streak to nine in a row, but wipes himself out at second base. So one gone. Hamill back in the windup. Here's Scooter Jeanette. We've been hearing a lot about good approach and you know approach at the plate and you know it's kind of a difficult thing to, to define but you know, what it is is it's a lot easier to speed your bat up than it is to slow it down and what I mean by that is you look away you let the ball travel you think about taking the ball up the middle into the opposite field and your your initial reaction your automatic reaction is going to be to be quick inside so you can speed your bat up if you're looking away but once you start that bat looking inside you can't slow it down and that's what the Brewers have been doing they've been looking away trying to make sure they stay on the baseball and reacting inside and just about every one of them have been doing it I mean hitting's contagious I mean that's a stale old overused saying in baseball but uh, you know when one guy starts getting success everybody else starts to relax and I, I really a pinpoint the top of the order for the Brewers mm -hmm. You get Segura, Braun, Luke Croy, those guys all swinging the bats well. Gomez, you put in there, and you know when the top of your order is getting it done, the bottom of the order relaxes, and they're going to start producing. Jeanette swings and misses. Down he goes on strikes. They secure it at first. Two outs in the inning. Now, good news for the Brewers here. Nobody warming up in the bullpen. And let's check in with Sophia with more on Willie Peralta. What do you see down there, Sophia? Well, Brian, after the innings final out, he did come back here to the dugout, had a brief conversation with Ron Renicky, and went back into the clubhouse with athletic trainer Dan Wright. He has not come back out yet, so we'll see uh, if he'll continue here for the third inning. But like you said, nobody warming up in the bullpen yet. It's just something grabbing Peralta, something in his back. Uh, we'll see how he's doing. Obviously, if he was in danger of not returning for the third inning the Brewers would uh, have somebody warming up quickly in that pen so there is no urgency there and that's a good sign and you got two of the best in the business Dan Wright Dave Yeager and if there was a major problem you wouldn't see Dan Wright sitting in that dugout right now he'd be up there with Willie Mark Reynolds with two away Reynolds has been nursing a balky knee over the last couple of days and he tweaked it a little bit. Nothing serious, but it's bugging him a little bit. And he pops this one up to center field. Junior Lake will make the catch and Hamill gives up a leadoff single but a three batter inning. We go to the third at Miller Park.
After a bit of a scare at a meeting at the mound, looked a little uncomfortable in that second inning. The results aren't showing that, though. He has retired the first six. Peralta has three strikeouts thus far. Now he'll face the bottom of the order. John Baker, Darwin Barney, and his mound opponent, Jason Hamill. Baker in there behind the plate for the Cubs today for Wellington Castillo. And every Cub late so far on Willie Peralta. He's got the good velocity going already. Looks like a little change up that missed upstairs. Yep, second one he's thrown today. Trying to mix it up a little bit. And that one caught the corner. John Baker. Left handed hitting catcher. Not much. Offensively for Baker this year he's hitting just 163. Has just seven hits. Castillo is the starter. Baker the backup. And he's been red hot last four games. He got a pinch hit single in yesterday's game. Two two from Peralta. Just missed. Count goes full. Cubs have been mixing and matching their lineup. Their roster trying to find the right combinations. Very rarely do you see the same lineup day in, day out as Baker slices one to left. And Davis is there for the first out. Seven in a row for Peralta. Hey, at Miller Park, Friday the 13th is your lucky day. All fans in attendance to see the Brewers take on the Reds. That's Friday, June 13th. We'll receive a Brewers retro t shirt. Courtesy of Husco International for tickets call 414 902 4000 or visit Brewers.com today. I'm a fan of these shirts. And they're good quality, you know. Not like like the giveaway shirts when I was a kid. They uh, disintegrate in the wash after the first time. I like that logo. Sweet. So huh? they're gonna be doing this the, the rest of the season periodically, these kind of these cool Logo t shirts got the keg, the 70 version. The Let's 19 see, what size is that? That's the what is that? quadruple extra large. Yeah, that's a double X. Slow roller and Segura bare hands throw to first, and it's in time. Wow, what a play! Gene Segura, there was a lot of question on who was going to field that ball. Peralta gave way to Reynolds, who gave way to Segura, who makes the play. Well, Segura has the best angle to go get it. You know, Reynolds stops because his momentum going away from first. Segura coming in hard, able to pick up the bare hand and make a good throw. That was pretty close. Got yep. him. Got him by a couple inches. And a good call over there by the crew chief, Jerry Meals. Excellent play Segura two outs for the pitcher Hamill. Hamill has one hit this season. He's got 22 plate appearances. We're to trying to make quick work of him. Now Willie with three strikeouts thus far. And a bouncing ball. Segura. Tough hop. And the side is retired. So Willie Peralta. What a start. Nine in a row to get us going. We head to the bottom of the third. Scoreless.
Hilton is brought to you by Piggly Wiggly, the official supermarket of Fox Sports Wisconsin. By Marshfield Clinic, don't just live, shine. And by Gerhards, the kitchen and bath store. Find inspirational design solutions and quality kitchen and bath products for your home. Visit GerhardStore.com. Picture perfect afternoon at Miller Park. Great to have you with us on Fox Sports Wisconsin. Brian Anderson with Bill Schroeder. Sophia Minnert. You've got Craig Kishon and Jerry Augustine on the Brewers live set. And our game being produced by Brad Weimer, directed by Mark Vittorio. No score, bottom third. Lyle Overbay will lead off. Overbay, Peralta, then back to the top of the order in Gene Segura. Brewers have two hits. Lucroy singled was stranded in the first inning. Davis singled to start the second but was thrown out trying to stretch it into a double. Overbay getting his first start of the series. Yesterday had Lucroy over at first. Cubs don't put as extreme of a shift on for Overbay. As the Orioles did, but they're still expecting him to pull the baseball. It's kind of unusual with Hamill out there with that uh, that sinker, 93, 94 miles an hour, going away from the left-handed hitter. Pretty much standard operating procedure in all of baseball with the big shift. And Overbay pulls that one over to Rizzo. Hamill is there for him, the first out of the third inning. Now don't forget to tune in to Brewers Live pregame tomorrow. Going to have a sit down with Ron Renicky. We talk about some philosophical baseball decisions, and the shifting idea came up, and uh, all the numbers that they use, and the the sequence, and the patterns that they go with for the shift. So he's a very bright man, Ron Renicky. Interesting to talk to, especially when you can get into some of the managerial philosophies instead of the game to game decisions. Did you ask him about the unwritten rules of uh, replay? I, I did off camera, but <laughs> <laughs> we had that situation come up last night. Actually, uh, Tim Kirkchen wrote a long piece about some of the unwritten rules, and we brought it up last night. There was a replay challenge situation, could have been challenged anyway. But the game was 11 to 2 and I asked Renicky and he said you know we really didn't have it conclusive and it was 11 to 2 and I didn't feel like it was the right place to do that. Well, and the so. other thing it wouldn't have cost a, if it cost a, a hitter you know a base hit. Yeah. I mean maybe you have to go to the replay but you know Ryan Braun got caught around in the bag at first. He got a base hit no big deal. Yeah the run had already scored the RBI was already there. It was just an out that ended an inning. In a different scenario maybe. As Peralta strikes out, and two gone. Hey, today's time of the game winner, O'Galley Saloon and Grill in O'Galley, Wisconsin. If they call the Brewers in the next 24 hours, they get 40 Miller Lite beer pen tickets to a Brewers home game. This offer, courtesy of the Tavern League of Wisconsin and Miller Lite. We've had some tough names of taverns and cities last couple of days. I think it's O'Galley. Oh, you're right on it. That's got to be near Eau Claire, I'm guessing. Yeah, it is. Just west. With the O factor. West of Eau Claire. Well done. You were there. Yeah. I've been to Eau Claire in a driving snowstorm. Can't tell you any other town between here and Eau Claire. I had the white knuckles around that steering wheel. A little flare into right. Easy for Sherholtz, and that is a quick inning for Jason Hamill. Three up, three down go the Brewers, and we go to the fourth. No score.
Scoreless game as we go to fourth. Our Jimmy John's freaky fast delivery. Gene Segura playing this one like a third baseman. Bare hand pickup and just does get Barney. That's a heck of a play. I mean, bare hand pickup. You see the way he spreads his fingers out. You know, to make his hand more like a basket. Then he grips it and gets off a good throw. This guy's something else at shortstop. And might we be looking at that one a little bit later. Peralta has retired nine in a row with three strikeouts. Back to the top of the order now at Bonifacio. Second time through here in the fourth inning. Bonifacio grounded out to short in the first. Segura made a good play on that one as well. And there's a liner in the right center. Base hit. Bonifacio picked that right up off the dirt. And a base hit the first of the day for the Cubs. And just tries to put the ball in play. Not much power. Doesn't have any home runs. But that's not his job. His job is to get on base. And has done a pretty good job of that so far this year. Eric Hinsky, the Wisconsin native from Manasha, first base coach for the Cubs. And we'll see if the Cubs play the running game here. Bonifacio is, has been a great base stealer in the past, and he takes off. And a bouncing ball to third. Reynolds goes to second. Safe there. And the throw to first is in time. Yeah, good try. Yeah, really nothing to lose as hard as that baseball is hit. Still able to get Lake at first. That's a heck of a play by Jeanette because Bonifacio is right on top of him. Check this out. Look at Scooter. I tell you what, I go to the replay there. That's an out. They got him out at second base. And, and here comes Ron Renneke. And because Jeanette finish the play you do get credit for the out regardless now if Jeanette just stopped there and didn't make a throw you would not assume the double play right on a there. replay challenge so well, that's about as close as it gets and second time you look at it looks like they got him by us just a smidgen but Jeanette does the right thing and going over to first base to get the out there well the Brewers think there is enough to overturn this so yeah. Renneke has Issued a challenge in the fourth inning. The call on the field is out. The crew chief, Jerry Meals. They went in doubt. Why not go to the replay? The Cubs, a couple of occasions in this series already, have not, for whatever reason. It might have cost them in yesterday's ball game. Rick Renteria decided not to go to a replay. That was in that third inning on a play at second base. Didn't even bother going out. You always see the crew chief and the calling umpire go to the headset. Paul Emmel, the taller of the two, is with the crew chief Meals. And well, it's close. I mean, it's frame by frame whether the ball is in the glove. Yeah, it's uh, very close. I mean, I wouldn't want to be the guy in New York to have to call that one. And remember, the language is to overturn a call, it has to be clear and convincing evidence. So this could go either way here. But worth the shot. I mean, that uh, it doesn't get much closer than that. And the out, the call in the field is out. Is there enough there to overturn it? And what a play by Reynolds on a bullet right at him. He would have picked it and try to be as quick as he could with Bonifacio running on the pitch. And they have the ruling, and Jerry Mills' call is safe at second. So the correct call was made by Emil at second base, <laughs> and the Brewers lose the challenge. Yeah, Renegade can't stands. believe it. You can't argue, though. So the call stands. The putout still goes 5 4 3, but Bonifacio safe at second, and one out in the inning. Here's Anthony Rizzo now. Well, these scoring opportunities could be few and far between today. At least it looks that way to start this game. 
And he puts that one right by Rizzo. Big swing. 95 mile an hour fastball power on power. Now you can get a fastball by him if you get it inside. If you get it in on the plate. That one right down the middle and Rizzo right through it. That's how good a stuff Willie has today. Of course, if Peralta puts his fastball where he wants it, he's going to throw it by any hitter. That's how good his fastball is. One ball, one strike on Rizzo. And he misses upstairs. You got Starlin Castro on deck. Cubs with their first hit. Bonifacio with the single. Dangerous part of their lineup. We talked to, about this yesterday. The Cubs, they're having a dreadful year, but they have some pockets of talent that can beat you badly. Guys like Rizzo and Castro. That misses just outside, and it goes to three and one. Brewers are going to face. Jason Hamill and Jeff Samarja today and tomorrow. Two outstanding pitchers for the Cubs. Yeah, Samarja leads the National League in earned run average. That's how good he's been. With one win. <laughs> right. <laughs> and he just got that win in San Francisco. He's up tomorrow. Kyle Loesch will oppose Jeff Samarja. Full count to Rizzo. One gone. Bonifacio at second base. And that ball is hit deep. Rizzo will watch this one go. Hit a mile. And the Cubs are on the board. Two to nothing. Anthony Rizzo with his ninth home run of the year. A no doubter into right center field. And they just dropped the head of the bat on it. And boy that ball went. Jumped off his bat. Wow. Had a pitch in on him. But it was down and Rizzo able to get good extension and drive it out of here. So the Cubs on the board first. Rizzo had the day off yesterday. Comes back. It's a long home run. To give the Cubs a lead, Castro takes a strike. Great young talent right there, Rizzo. From the Red Sox organization to the Padres to the Cubs, kind of following the Jed Hoyer trail, the general manager under Theo Epstein. They knew him well. Two and two. Outside ball three. Castro, for the most part, a free swinger. Now you give him a fastball anywhere near the strike zone. He's going to get a pretty good swing at it. You can get him on off speed stuff. Likes the ball up in the zone. Castro does not walk much, although he has 12 walks this year. Once led the National League in hits. That was in his second season. Typically up there hacking for three straight years. The last three years, he's led the National League in at bats. <laughs> now you don't get an, an official at bat for a walk. So the fact that he rarely walks is the reason. And he's out there every day. He played in all but one game last year. But he walks this time, so Castro is aboard. Yeah, 317 on base percentage, not very good. 
Of course, the Cubs have had a miserable time in scoring runs this year. Guys in front of him not getting on much. Castor used to be a top of the order guy, leadoff hitter, but more in an RBI spot in the lineup these days. Well, Nate Sherholtz with one out. Two hits and a walk in this inning for Peralta after he retired the first nine he faced. That's a big call out there at second base at this point. Yeah. I mean, really big call. Could have gone either way. Well, the Brewers had a challenge that they lost. And remember, when you lose a challenge, you don't get another one. That's it. You get one challenge a game, but if you get it correct, then you get another one added to it. So Renicki won't have that opportunity again. Once you get to the seventh inning, the umpires will typically, under most scenarios, go to a replay review on a close play. But they don't have to. And without a challenge, Renicki can't force him to. No balls and a strike. One man out. Brewer set up to turn two here. Got Castro at first, and sure holds fouls it back. Yeah, sure holds in last night's ball game took a Marco Estrada change up down on the way and hooked it out of here to right. Well, you can get the fastball in on his hands up in the strike zone. Low ball hitter. Really crouches down in that batter stance. I mean, almost as if he wants the ball down in the strike zone. Look how bent over he is. Making it very difficult for him to handle a big fastball up around the letters. Sherholtz came up with the Giants. He was traded from San Francisco to Philadelphia the year the Giants won the World Series. Still got a ring. 2012. Cubs are one of the few teams that gave Sherholtz the opportunity to be an everyday player in the outfield. A lot of teams like him as a fourth outfielder, but. He wanted to come to Chicago to prove he could play every day. Numbers are down to start the year for Sherholtz, hitting just 212, starting play today with a couple of homers. And Peralta missing inside. Two and two now on Sherholtz. I mentioned Willie had a tough time throwing his fastball for strikes against the Marlins. This time it's the slider. Not able to get a swing. He did strike out Rizzo in the first inning on a slider, but since that time he's had a difficult time in throwing it for a strike. Two run home run by Anthony Rizzo has the Cubs on the board in this fourth inning. And a bouncing ball. Peralta touched it. Jeanette gets the out there. Unlikely they get Sherholtz anyway at first, but they get the lead out at second base. Man, right off the end of the bat, you're probably right. They're not going to turn a double play anyway, but they did get the lead runner. And that's the main thing. Man, Jeanette had to make an adjustment and went back and got it and was still able to get. Castro at second base. And that put out goes one, four, six. So two outs. Both of the outs have been handled by three players on each occasion. It's rare. And to not be a double play. Two gone for Chris Coglin. It's a stretch for the Cubs of three consecutive left handed hitters. Sure holds Coglin and Baker. 
Runner goes. Luke Royce throw to second, right on the money. Out is the call. Sherholtz gunned down. And the inning ends at second base. Well, the Cubs get two on the board. The big bats for the Brewers coming up in the bottom of the fourth. Braun will lead off. off Willie Peralta the Brewers trail two to nothing now here in the fourth we check in with our Powerball home run leaderboard Mark Reynolds leading the Brewers with 12 Carlos Gomez 11 and with the heart of the order due up and Aramis Ramirez set to go out to Appleton tomorrow and Monday for a rehab assignment a lot of conversation with Ron Renneke about what will happen with Aramis Ramirez and the top of the order. Now, Ron Renneke saying that Aramis has indicated he'd be willing to hit somewhere other than the cleanup spot to obviously preserve the top four, how well they've been producing. And Renneke said he certainly doesn't want to disrupt the lineup right now, but it's a question of what happens a month from now? Where do we put Gomez, Segura, getting Ramirez back into the cleanup spot? So it'll be a, a, an interesting conversation over the next few days when they activate Ramirez next week. Tough spot to be in for Ron Renicky, right? Who do I want to be my cleanup hitter? Because they're both deserving of it. Because everybody's raking right now. Right. I mean, I guess when he first comes off the disabled list, you know, Ramirez will probably hit a little bit, maybe fifth. You know, put him in the fifth spot, move everybody else down a bit, making that lineup even better. But you know, I think Renicky really likes Gomez, or I should say, likes Ramirez in that cleanup spot. And I think ultimately that's where he's going to end up. I was talking to Ron the other day about. The lineup construction that's been a huge topic here lately but you know he made a good point he said ideally whether Ramirez is hitting cleanup Braun third it, the key to that in his mind is those two Braun and Ramirez hitting back to back in the order and you want them in a bit of a run producers spot as Braun rolls to second but you don't want to do that at the risk of Messing up the chemistry that this lineup has developed over the last week or so. Week and a half, it's been outstanding, and that's about the time where Ron Renegade put Segura and Braun one and two in the batting order. How do you move Luke Croy out of the number three spot? I mean, right now, Luke Croy is your best all around hitter. I mean, from the beginning of the season till now. I mean, not so much for power, but I mean, just making contact, shooting the ball around the diamond, 22 RBIs. So, a good problem to have for the Brewers skipper. And the Brewers aren't always going to have this many players hot at the same time offensively. You pump the well till it's dry, and then you can start right. making better decisions. It's good to have options, though. And the Brewers do have a very potent lineup. That was going to be their strength even to start the year. And uh, not only does Ramirez bring some punch when he returns in his own right, but he also. He deepens that lineup. It off. It makes your bench better because now right. it puts Reynolds and Overbay back in a platoon. 
So you're going to have a stronger bench, more of a threat coming off the bench because Ramirez is back as a starter. And let's just hope that everything goes well and Ramirez's rehab starts over the next two days. Hamstring injury has had Ramirez on the shelf. He was eligible last Monday, so he's going to miss it by about a week to 10 days if he does return, say, on Wednesday. And that, that's okay. And he did it playing defense, you know, going after a baseball in the hole, flipping over to second base, and came up with a pulled hamstring. Two and two to Lucroy. In the air to center field. Routine for Lake. And two men are out in this fourth inning. Braun and Lucroy retired. Hey, Joe Maurer and the Minnesota Twins head to Miller Park to battle Jonathan Lucroy and the Brewers this Monday and Tuesday as the Brew Crew caps off their homestand against their interleague rivals. Tickets start at just $9. Reserve your spot at Brewers.com. Remember Monday. What time's the game, partner? That's going to, I believe... All right, that's a 620 start. <laughs> 620 start, and the parking lot's open at 420. There we go. WTMJ promotion. Everybody knows that, Rock. Here's Gomez, and he takes a strike. And we do now. <laughs> Just because we were the last to know that doesn't mean we don't know it. We would have been here anyway. Sure. I mean, it's not like we would have been late. Quickly, 0 and 2 on Gomez. Well, it comes with a 2 0 lead, and it feels pretty steep with the way Hamill has pitched not only this year, but against the Brewers this year and against the Brewers in his career. 0 and 2, Gomez lays off. By the way, the Twins will be coming here from New York. They lost today. The Yankees beat him 3 1. Tanaka won again. He is now eight and one. The only loss was to Hamill and the Cubs at Wrigley. As Gomez is drilled. On a two strike pitch, Hamill lets one leak inside, and Gomez hit by a pitch. And a base mind. runner with two outs. I just don't mind that too much. 0 2 against a tough right hander. Go ahead, let it hit me. I'll take first, and I'll steal second base. Got him right on the padding. That's why he wears it. Gomez is what is known as a diver. He dives in on the baseball. So that padding allows him to protect that lead elbow. There's a lot of pitchers that wish that padding would be outlawed. That would eliminate the diving. Yeah, it hurts a little more without that pad. <laughs> right on the elbow. All right, here's Davis now. Gomez a big lead over there. Hamill with a good move. Remember the, that suit of armor Barry Bonds used to wear. They outlawed that. Yeah, you can't have it has to be soft material now. It can't be the and it can't be as big plastic, right? Look like a gladiator up there at the plate. Craig Biggio, he used to wear something similar. Yeah. Another check on Gomez. Chris Davis trying to catch a mistake. He singled the left to extend a hitting streak to nine games, but tried to stretch it into a double, was thrown out at second. Brewers have two hits and now a hit batter. There goes Gomez. Davis lets him run. Throw to second is a bad one. Gomez steals the base and is now on his way to third. And the throw comes in and Gomez is out. Man. And wait a minute. We're going to have interference call here. The second base umpire, Paul Immel, is saying that Gomez got tied up with Darwin Barney. And he's granting him third base. That's obstruction right there. Yep. On an obstruction call, the ball's in play. It's a live ball. And then once the play is finished, then the umpire will make a decision as to where the runner should be. You know, Gomez goes in head first. Check it out. Here's the obstruction right here. 
Boy, that's pretty ticky tack right there. I don't know about that call. Wow. That's not a reviewable play. Interference and obstruction not reviewable. That uh, that's a very very close call and one that you would think would not really warrant any type of call by the umpire. And you're talking, you know, Barney get out of the way and, and basically Gomez brushed him his back with his elbow. Check it out. There's Darwin Barney. He actually gets out of the way. And very incidental contact. He had to change his path toward third base, but I mean that's just the course of play right there. Yeah, Paul Emma was making the call right away, so that'll be a stolen base for Gomez. And ends up at third on the obstruction call. So he's there with two outs. The pitch to Davis was a strike, so the count is 0 and 1. Now the Brewers with a chance to score a run here. Down 2 nothing. Cubs got two in the top of this inning. Brewers have been rather aggressive on the bases today. Chris Davis got thrown out trying to stretch a single into a double with nobody out. And Gomez nearly made the third out of third base. And two things you don't want to do. Ball and a strike on Davis and a swing and a miss a big cut by Davis. One and two the count obstruction is. You know something that is it's kind of interference but on the defense side and it's a live ball the, the play will finish and then the umpire will determine where runners have be placed. Interference is based on the offense the offense interfering with a player that's a dead ball. So in that case. Even though obstruction was called, Gomez, had he wanted to, he could have just kept running and tried to score. Right. There's no, the ball is still alive. They call obstruction, and you know they make a throw to third base, goes into the dugout. Mm -hmm. The Brewers will still be able to score. I see. Two and two to Davis, way outside. Full count to Davis with Jeanette on deck. Well, a game like this, when the two pitchers are going along well, and take advantage of opportunities. Brewers looking for a two out hit to produce a run. Full count. Gomez takes his lead at third. And Davis sends one to center field. Back is Junior Lake. He's at the track with room. He makes the play. Just missed it, did Davis. And the inning ends, and it's still 2 nothing Cubs.
Fox Sports Wisconsin is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at southwest.com. By the Wisconsin Lottery, reminding you to please play responsibly. And by Miller Lite, now in the original can, it's Miller time. Oh yeah, a lot to do at Miller Park. Take, take a few cuts, fun for the kids. Great crowd today, a sellout to see the Cubs and the Brewers game two. And first ball swinging, Coglin deep to right. Braun is there, a line shot. Braun playing deep to begin with, makes a play for the out, one pitch. One out for Willie Peralta. And that'll bring up John Baker. Peralta ready to work, ready for Baker to dig in. Could use a quick inning, Willie giving up the two run homer to Anthony Rizzo. Kind of labored through that fourth a little bit with two hits and a walk. Peralta retired the first nine batters he faced with three strikeouts. Quickly 0 and 2 on Baker. Baker last time up flew out to left. Backup catcher for the Cubs. It's quite a contraption he has on his elbow as well. It looks like something to to protect the elbow, not just the padding, but also like the extension of the elbow. Had some elbow problems in the past. High tech, isn't it? Keeps it from hyperextending, I would assume. And keeps the elbow warm. A nice sleeve on there. That's a, I'd have been a 300 hitter if I had something like that. <laughs> oh, is that right? <laughs> you just were born in the wrong era, Rock. <laughs> I wish I could wear a pad. Now you're stuck with me. Yeah. <laughs> It's all about style points these days. Yeah. For injury prevention only, not a training device. There's a swing and a miss. Down he goes. Peralta powers a fastball by him. Strikeout number four for Willie. Well, time now for you to tweet your photo using hashtag WISFANPHOTO. For a chance to have it shown in an upcoming broadcast, and it's brought to you by AT&T. Did you ever wear any gear at the plate? Do you wear an ankle pad or nope, nothing? No. Nope. How about behind the plate, other than the regular standard catcher's equipment? No. Nope. Did you ever have those little cushions in the back? No. Could have extended your career, Rock. I never had any problems. You know, what ended my career was uh, batting average. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing you can order in the mail to help that. Yeah, actually, elbow problem. Maybe that pad might have helped me. Who knows? Well, you got a you got a nice little zipper on that elbow. You had had some surgery you got done. A zipper and a couple of holes here in the right elbow. Yep. Doctor Paul Jacobs extended my career another six years. And don't say anything. <laughs> I can see you thinking over there. <laughs> no, no. no I, I can smell wood burning. Just reminds us of story time when Rock sits around the campfire with the crew and shows us all of his scars. Yeah. One two pitch and a bouncer foul. Darwin Barney. Down in the hole one and two. Had a little presentation today for the crew. You, you missed out on, but you were involved in the actual plaque. So uh, 
our crew responsible for the first ever overturned replay challenge in Major League Baseball history. And we got a nice little plaque today. Oh, nice. There's a shot on a hop to Segura. And he makes the play. Segura flashing some leather today. Another excellent pickup. He robbed Barney again. And earlier today, the Brewers Community Foundation presented a $150,000 check to City Year Milwaukee. The contribution serves as a three-year commitment to the organization. City Year serves students by placing core members in the classroom to support academic achievement. Brewers Community Foundation has adopted Roosevelt Middle School for the City Year commitment. So congratulations to the staff and core members at City Year on the impact they're having in the lives of many students. Another great BCF cause, Brian. Yeah, we're behind that 100%. Great work. From Cecilia Gore, the Brewers Community Foundation. Two nothing Cubs as we go to the bottom of the fifth inning. Scooter Jeanette, Mark Reynolds, and Lyle Overbay. Six, seven, and eight in the Brewers batting order against Jason Hamill, who's given up just two hits. Hamill has allowed two singles, Lucroy and Davis. And he's hit a batter. He hit Gomez last inning. Gomez ended up at third after he stole a base. There was an obstruction call. By the way, there was an error on that obstruction on Darwin Barney. I was wondering when that error was going to come up, and uh, finally, you know, came up on the scoreboard. Yeah, obstruction, you know, is an error on the guy that commits it because you have to account for the base somehow. If you're keeping that scorebook, you nobody just advances on their own. There's always a reason to advance. And E4 is how you account for Gomez to third base. One two to Jeanette. He lays off. And that's one of the few ways that Darwin Barney can commit an error. He doesn't commit many. Pretty gold, good fielder. Yeah, Gold Glove Award winner. Darwin Barney had a long errorless streak last season. 2 2. Jeanette rifles one back up the middle. A base hit. So there's a leadoff single. And I've got a breaking pitch up in the strike zone. Able to bang it right back through the middle. That's what we were talking about. That good approach for the Brewers. And Jeanette always has that, you know, front shoulder closed no matter what the pitch. Keeps the hands in and hits a line drive in the center field. That's a good start. A leadoff base runner for the Brewers. That was a great look from behind the catcher and how fast that ball comes back through the box. Even though that was kind of a higher line drive, Hamill was the old chuck and duck. Trying to get the pitcher on his heels a little bit. Now Mark Reynolds. Two nothing Cubs and Reynolds takes one inside. 
Uh, some starting to creep onto the field of play from the grandstands along first base. Going to make it interesting here in about an inning. They're coming through the panels as the sun sets. Sun sets behind the first base grandstand. And then hitters will say once that sunlight creeps across the plate in the mound, it gives you that strobe effect as it's coming to the plate. Late afternoon games are a challenge in Miller Park. So the point is, better get him while the getting's good here. Yeah, get him early, or get to Hamill and get him out of the ball game. Get the pitch count up somehow, and try to get after that Cubs bullpen. Well, that last pitch right down the middle of the plate. Look at it, on box tracks. Almost split home plate in half. Two balls and a strike on Reynolds. Jeanette at first. And Reynolds fouls it back. Almost in the same spot. Two and two. Reynolds in a little bit of a slide here. Still has 12 home runs. That leads the club. He'll go through his streaks. Yeah, he'll take the good with the bad with Mark Reynolds. He'll go through stretches where he's striking out a lot, but then. When he gets hot, he'll hit home runs in bunches. We've seen that already. And he lays off a tough pitch. Full count to Reynolds. We'll see if Jeanette is on the move here. Down two, playing the bottom of the fifth inning. Last time Baker threw to second, it was not a very good throw. The Cubs catcher. That was with Gomez running. I'm not sure if Jeanette's going to take off, but you know, Mark Reynolds, as we talked about, will swing and miss. You risk the strike him out, throw him out, although you're at the bottom of the batting order. I try and make something happen here. He stays put, and Reynolds fouls it away. Reynolds had a good road trip, hit a grand slam in Atlanta. Had a two homer game against the Marlins. Has 20 career multi home run games. And checks into play today tied for fourth in the National League in home runs. And he leads all NL third baseman which is where he's been playing mostly. Three two again Reynolds takes a call at strike three. And he's got reason to complain that pitch looked outside according to Fox tracks. But rung up and out number one for Jason Hamill on his fifth strikeout. Yeah, 3 2 breaking pitch and Mark Reynolds fooled by it. Angel Campos rings him up and John Baker made it look pretty good. Looked like it was on the outside or outside, but too close to take. That could have changed it. That was a big call instead of first and second. Nobody out. One gone for Lyle Overbay. Batting eighth in this Brewers lineup. That's where he's been in this change of the lineup here recently. Got Willie Peralta, the pitcher, due up next. One man gone. And Overbay takes a strike. Sophia has been. Chatting with Ron Renicki about this lineup change, and one of the areas of discussion, Sophia, has been the eighth position. They're considering maybe hitting the pitcher there. Is that correct? That is correct. It's something that's been discussed over the last few days with Ryan Braun succeeding in the two spot of bumping the pitcher up to the eighth spot and moving somebody like Scooter Jeanette down to the ninth spot. Renicki saying, you know, just trying to set up that leadoff hitter, the two spot. 
He said it obviously depends on the personnel. So it could look something like having Mark Reynolds or Lyle Overbay in the seventh spot, the pitcher, and then Scooter Jeanette said he had something he has not done as a manager, but they used it when he was with the Angels with Orlando Palmero. Yeah, not a bad idea when you have Ryan Braun hitting second. He said so you have two you have two leadoff hitters. Mm -hmm. You have Jeanette and then followed by Segura, then you have Braun and the hope there is is that you have men on base for Braun when he comes up, you know, after that first inning. Swing and a miss, and Overbay is down on strikes. Back to back K's after the leadoff single. And both coming on breaking pitches. And something about Hamill and the Brewers. Jason Hamill has been outstanding. Gave up only three hits to the Brewers back at Miller Park. Back in April. Seven shutout innings, and doing the same here today. Six punch outs already. Never lost to the Brewers in his career. Four and zero oh in five starts with a 2-2-5 ERA. Had some time with the Rockies. Most recently with the Orioles. Hamill signed a one-year deal with the Cubs. Had a bad year last year. Had some forearm problems. Two years ago. Was looking like the Orioles ace and then he injured his knee he actually had to have knee surgery. In July of 2012 that was the year the Orioles made the playoffs Hamill came back that year but wasn't quite the same. And then wasn't able to stay healthy last year he just made over 20 starts last season. So baseball's version of sing for your supper this year he is. <laughs> On a one year deal at six million dollars trying to prove that he's healthy and can. Pitch the entire season that way and if he does you figure he's going to have a lot of offers. Big risk pitching one year for six million. <laughs> yeah that's. <laughs> when you say it that way. <laughs> yeah really. <laughs> well good luck to you. <laughs> that pretty good chunk of change for you know taking a big gamble. He came up with that sinker, you know, when he was with the Colorado Rockies. I mean, that's a place where you really don't rely too much on big breaking pitches and four seamers. Came up with that two seamer, and it's been a good pitch for him. One and two on Peralta. Willie's got plenty of power, no question. He hits him a long ways in BP, but he's got to get a mistake from Hamill. And Hamill's not making many mistakes so far today. Jeanette still at first, a leadoff single, and Peralta strikes out. So three consecutive K's after the leadoff hit. Hamill is dealing again. Game two, and it's brought to you by Toyota. Five in the books, the only tally on the board. 
courtesy of Anthony Rizzo. He had a two run home run in the fourth inning. Got a fastball and did not miss it. Meanwhile, Jason Hamill has been lights out again. Hamill with five shutout innings, only three hits allowed. Brewers got a leadoff single in the fifth, and he struck out the next three batters. So Hamill and Peralta hooked up in another close one here, as they did back in late April when Hamill beat Peralta. Two nothing Cubs as we go to the sixth. And another good start for Willie Peralta, as you talked about. I mean, it's one of those spots in the rotation right now where just not getting a lot of runs of support. Talked about his main numbers one and three with a 169 earned run average. Could be just the other way around for him. Well, Peralta got Hamill to ground out last time up, and Hamill singles up the middle, just his second hit of the year. And the Cubs pitcher is aboard with the top of the order coming up. Hey, once again in 2014, the Brewers have teamed up with Summerfest to bring you two awesome lineups and one great ticket package. For just $24, you'll get one Brewers Terrace Reserve ticket and one Summerfest general admission ticket. For details, visit Brewers.com slash Summerfest. You could go a lot of directions with that one. A little, maybe a little Jerry Garcia, a little Santa Claus. It's a good look. You like that promotion, don't you? That's got to be one of your favorites of all time. The rock, the ballpark promotion. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. It's good. No, not everything that starts with rock I'm really into. But that is, right? But that is, absolutely, yeah. yeah. Minus the roll. It's more like a like a rock and stumble. <laughs> <laughs> Lately. <laughs> Top of the order, Bonifacio shows bunt, pushes it foul. Say hey to our buddy John Bowler. It's that time again at Summerfest, doing a great job. Their marketing department putting together the great lineup. People from miles and miles away coming to Milwaukee for Summerfest, one of the great events of the year. We love that event. Part of the culture of this great city. Yeah. Always something going on down at the lakefront grounds, the Summerfest grounds, the ethnic festival, Summerfest. No better place to be in the summer. The speedy Bonifacio. Switch hitting third baseman. Brewers expecting a bunt here. Two balls and a strike. And he swings in the air to left field. Davis is there. Got the glasses on. Tough sunfield right now and left. Davis makes a play. Bonifacio is out. Yeah, that's what you want to do. You want to get Bonifacio to hit the baseball in the air. You know, no power whatsoever, but boy, he makes good contact. Line drives ground balls. He gets it in the air. Pretty good chance you get him out. And here's the free swinging junior lake now. A converted shortstop junior lake just two seasons ago. Once they signed Starlin Castro. That shortstop position became closed at the big league level so they moved Lake to the outfield. He's got some holes in his swing but he also has major power and he is. A great athlete, and there are a lot of comparisons to Carlos Gomez, the current junior league, to what Gomez was when he first arrived to the big leagues. A lot of tools that's going to take some time to to figure it out. Yeah, raw talent just has to figure out, you know, you know, strike zone and you know how to you know maintain a consistent approach. I'll use that word again. Don't like to use it too much. It's an overused term. And have a good idea when you go up there at the plate. Understand what they're going to do to you, what the pitcher is going to give you, and and how you react to different pitches.
No balls, two strikes on Lake. Hamill, the pitcher at first. And a swing and a miss. Chase swung. He missed badly. On a breaking ball in the dirt, Lucroy blocks it. And a strikeout for Peralta for the second out. And the slider not even close. That's what we're talking about with Lake. Just waiting back. And as he matures, he'll learn to be a little bit more patient at the plate. Not try to hit everything out of the ballpark. Time for our AT&T fan photo. This is our entry today. Chelsea. A dog with a hat on. Makes air every time, especially a camo hat. Yeah, military hat. You betcha. Don't forget to tweet your photos. Use the hashtag WISFANPHOTO. And our thanks to AT&T. Good luck, Chelsea. Speaking of dogs, haven't seen Hank around lately. I think he's making an appearance tomorrow in Appleton. He and Aramis Ramirez are heading up there. They're going up there to get a rehab. <laughs> Hank's rehab is long done with, yeah, isn't it? I think so. He's still got some bad memories. There's a little trauma there. Thank Eddie, uh, Eddie Cedar, and the rest of the Brewers for rehabbing him back in spring training. Rizzo takes low. Now the key batter in the ball game for Peralta at this point. Rizzo hit a two-run home run in the fourth. Willie tried to sneak a fastball by him, and Rizzo hit one deep into the lows level in right center for his ninth homer. Two balls in a strike. That one's in there, two and two. That one had some life on it right there. 95, catching the outer half of the plate down in the zone. And Rizzo looking for something upstairs. Now you bury the slider on the back foot, get him. That's how he struck him out his first time up. And a leadoff single, Hamill still at first base. Two outs, two nothing Cubs, and Rizzo a little bit late on a fastball. Count even to two and two. Rizzo coming off a career year last year. In his second season with the Cubs, he made his big league debut with the Padres at 11. With 23 homers last year with the Cubs. And there's that breaking ball you were looking for. Rizzo lays off. In a good spot for it. You don't want to leave it up. So full count. That'll send Hamill on his way at first. Both pitchers racking up the strikeouts. Willie Peralta has five. Hamill has seven. The payoff. There goes Hamill. Rizzo swings and drives one to right. That is way back and gone again. Another two-run home run for Anthony Rizzo. This time on a slider. And it's 4 nothing Cubs. Yep, he can hit. He got a mistake right there. We talked about don't leave that slider up in the strike zone or it's going to get hit. And it got hit hard. And Rizzo knew as soon as he hit it that that ball was in the second deck out there in right. And get that ball down and in. And you get him to swing over the top of it like he did the first time up. That was a hanger. 4 nothing Cubs. Rizzo. Responsible for all the runs here today. Now has 10 homers. First multi homer game of the season. Had a two homer game against the Nationals last August. And now 28 runs batted in as Peralta falls behind Starlin Castro 2 0.
both of Rizzo's home runs today have been with two strikes. Which only adds to the sting for Willie Peralta. Yeah, tried to go back to back, you know, double up on the slider. The first one he threw down in the dirt, a good pitch, and he hung one. It's amazing sometimes what a day off is going to do for a hitter. You know, the Cubs had a day off on Thursday. He had yesterday off, so back to back off days, and he comes out swinging it pretty fresh. A mental break more than a physical break. There's a line shot that is going to be fair just inside the line it goes down into the corner and Stalin Castro with a double the third hit of the inning. That is a tough combo in Rizzo and Castro they can do some damage no question. Well, they haven't done much damage this year the Cubs have had a tough time scoring runs. Of course the guys around them haven't been doing much. Willie Peralta approaching 100 pitches. The Brewers bullpen starting to get busy. Zach Duke starting to toss. Two outs, runner at second. Here's Nate Scherholtz. And a batter. Peralta has to retire probably will be his last hitter. He got a left handed batter at Chris Coughlin due up next. Yeah three in a row including Shearholz. And Zach Duke just started to throw. Peralta started this game retiring the first nine batters he faced with three strikeouts. Two big swings of the bat by yeah. Anthony Rizzo. That's, well, that's it. it. That's all. I mean, he's pitched well, except for two pitches. It's the most earned runs Peralta has allowed in a start all season. Two and one on Sherholtz. And you look at Willie's. 10 starts prior to this one. He had only allowed three earned runs once. Other than that, it's been zeros, ones, and twos. Yeah. Castro at second. Two and one on Sherholtz. Here he comes. And a swing and a miss, two and two. Still got good velocity, 95. Up in the strike zone. Now the Brewers in the bottom of the six will have the top of the order coming up. Peralta made the last out in the fifth inning. So Segura, Braun, Lucroy, if anybody gets on, Gomez. Peralta trying to keep it at four. Sure holds offered at it able to check it and the count goes full three and two I try to change up that time sure holds almost went for it that could be his last pitch of the day trying to get through six innings against the Cubs. In the air to right, that's foul. Hooked it on a breaking ball. The most pitches Peralta has thrown in a start this year came against the Reds in that eight inning gym. 110 pitches. 
They don't uh, let him stretch out too far past that this time of the year. Maybe later in the season. But not right now. And there's a walk. The inning continues. And we'll see if. Peralta is on his way out. You've got a lefty Coglin coming up. Zach Duke is ready in the bullpen. If you get Duke up in this inning, it's probably a good time to bring him in. There he comes. You wouldn't get him up in, up in the bullpen if you weren't going to bring him in in this situation. So Ron Rennick, he's seen enough. Really, only two bad pitches for Willie Peralta. Well, and Peralta is out five and two thirds. No chance to win this one here today. See if his offense can pick him up a little. We'll set up the new pitcher when we continue. Thing as we play on in the top of the sixth inning, the end of the line for Willie Peralta as he goes five and two thirds with five hits, four runs at this point. Still two out there that belong to him. And it'll be Zach Duke to try to get the Brewers to the dugout and only trailing for nothing. Yeah, last appearance for Zach Wednesday against the Orioles, tossed the scoreless ninth inning, gave up a couple of hits, but struck out a batter, has 27 strikeouts and 21 in the third innings. Has got a couple of left handers due up. With a couple of men on and two outs. So Coglin first man up. This is the part of the batting order for Renteria and the Cubs with three consecutive lefties. They have four lefties and a switch hitter in their lineup today. And you figure Zach Duke could give Renneke a couple of innings if need be. Two outs, two on. Coglin takes a first pitch breaking ball for a strike. Sherholtz walked. Castro ahead of him doubled. That was after the home run by Rizzo. Peralta was a strike away from getting out of this inning in a 2 nothing game. But Rizzo went deep for the second time on a two strike pitch. Duke one of three lefties in the Brewers bullpen. All in very different roles and a shot back up the middle base hit. Castro around third and he will score and the Cubs lead five to nothing. Chris Coglin with a single in an RBI. And often Zach Duke gives up base hits to left handers at fastball. Was supposed to be on the outside corner, left it middle in, and Coglin able to keep the hands in and bang it into center field for a two out RBI. And the Cubs swinging it all of a sudden. Six hits now and five runs. Well, you know, last night the Cubs had 10 hits. Five runs on 10 hits last night. As Baker takes a strike. 
That's been the strength of the Brewers bullpen preventing inherited runners from scoring. Duke's been great. He's only let two runs in leading up to his outing today. He's inherited 11 and only two have scored. But one in here in the sixth. When you start looking at relievers who come into games mid inning with men on typically. You tend to look past the ERA and you start looking at those inherited runners. And there's a base hit just over the stretch of Jeanette and another run will score. So Baker singles in a run and the Cubs lead six nothing. Yeah, very unusual for Zach Duke to give up base hits to left handed batters but. And Duke with a side arm delivery left the slider up in the strike zone or no that pitch is down and away and you see left handers flailing away at it. And not today. It was a fastball that Coglin hit Baker picked on a slider. And you can close the book on Willie Peralta his worst start of the year five and two thirds six earned runs. An ERA buster. Here's Darwin Barney runners at the corners with two away. And there's a soft liner into left center. Another run is in. And Barney, a belly flop into second with an RBI double. Seven nothing Cubs. Can't get him out right now. All of this with two outs. Six consecutive base runners, five hits and a walk with two outs. And it's all about location for Duke. Tried to get one down and away. Darwin Barney able to hook it out in the center field. Good job by Carlos Gomez to cut it off to save at least one run. And the Cubs uh, continue that merry-go-round. Three consecutive hits, all with runners in scoring position. Cubs are now four for four with runners in scoring position today, and that includes the Anthony Rizzo home run in the fourth inning. That's how fast it can disappear. Hamill, the pitcher who started all of this with a single, the tenth batter of the inning for the Cubs. Peralta sitting there with two outs and a runner at first, and no runs in here in the six. It was a two nothing game. Rizzo, a two run homer. Four more hits after that, and a walk. And it's seven nothing, a five run inning. And there's a strikeout. And that will retire the side. So Hamill is out. The inning is finally over, but not before the Cubs score five and lead seven nothing.
Oh, and Jason Hamill working on a shutout, a three hitter. Gene Segura, one of the bright spots today, defensively, is in our Southwest Airlines non stoppable plays. And he's made a few nice plays out there defensively. Excellent shortstop, an all star last year. Segura is 0 for 2 at the plate. He'll lead off this sixth inning, and the Brewers have a lot of work to do down seven runs. The girl Braun and Lucroy coming up. Peralta giving up six earned runs in five and two thirds as ERA goes from 2 1 2 to 2 7 3 with his start today, and he's on the hook for the loss again. He's had some losses where he's pitched very well, just didn't get any run support. Not getting any run support today, and had a tough day at the office. It only takes one when you have an earned run average around two. And one bad outing, it balloons that earned run average. Still at, uh, you know, where he's at now, still pretty good. And once again, not getting a lot, getting any run support. It's not the first time that's happened this year. Well, the Brewers have been on such a binge offensively. A little striking when they're not swinging the bats well. Got nine straight days of double digit hits. Brewers took two out of three from the Orioles after they won a series against the Marlins to finish the last road trip. Segura pops it up. Junior Lake under it, and there is out number one. Let's take a look at our car suit. Dot com trivia today. This is a who am I or a who are we? I played in Milwaukee in 64 and 65 as well as 74. My son played with the Cubs from 02 to 04. Who are we? The father and the son. Make sense? I get it. That's a tough one. Hmm. A legacy. Who spent time in Milwaukee as Braun is drilled. So Gomez was hit earlier. Now Braun hit in the square of the back. And he's on his way to first. Hamill says, My bad. My fault. It's okay. Didn't still do it on hurt. purpose. You know what? Even if it wasn't on purpose, still hurt a little bit. <laughs> Say I'm sorry all you want, but look how high that was. Well, the base runner with one out. Not a whole lot going on offensively for the Brewers, just the three hits and two hit by pitches. Lucroy at the plate, he has one of those three hits. Yep, Gomez drilled, now Ryan Braun. Cubs have hit 22 batters this year. Chris Basio. Always believed in pitching inside. He did as a player. Remember him as a pitching coach with the Brewers. I mean, big advocate of keeping a hitter honest on the inside corner. Not so much trying to throw at hitters, but you got to be able to throw inside once in a while. Speaking of throwing at hitters, did you see the events in Boston yesterday with David Price of the Rays and the Red Sox? Hitting David Ortiz. They don't like each other, do they? No, they don't. <laughs> I did that playoff game last year when Ortiz hit two home runs off Price, and he watched one of them for a while, and Price took exception. First time he faced him this year, he drilled him. Yeah, they had a bench clearing brawl yesterday. Raise Red Sox. Braun takes off. Lucroy in the right, and it's a diving catch by Scherholtz. And he's going to have a double play to end the inning. And that's the way the day's going for the Brew Crew. Lucroy hit it right on the nose. Scherholtz with a terrific play, but it turns into two. And Hamill still has a shutout going through six.
Jackson Hamill working on a three-hit shutout, and this is our shining moment, Brock. Courtesy of the Marshfield Clinic, and a, a chance to uh, visit with some veterans before the game. Ed Cedar down there. Yeah, Dean, uh, he's for special forces uh, in the Air Force. He just got back from Afghanistan. You know, interesting story with Dean is that you know, he's up from Marshfield, and he's been on a number of tours over in Iraq and Afghanistan. And he's been in the military for a long, long time, and. His job was to seek out and destroy weapons of mass destruction and chemical weapons. How about that? Wow. I mean, that's what you call some dirty work right there. No. And so ag he, active military, I beg your pardon. Absolutely, not, yeah. Not a veteran. No, no, no. He's, a, he's active, yep. And uh, you know, got a chance to spend some time with uh, he and his group down there and uh, had him up to the booth during the uh, last inning. One of our hometown heroes here in Milwaukee. Yeah, for in sure. Wisconsin. Yep. Keeps it in perspective what those guys have seen and done to keep us safe. We had a great Memorial Day celebration here at Miller Park to start this homestand against the Orioles. And the Brewers, as an organization overall, do a great job connecting to servicemen and women and uh, military projects. And specifically, without embarrassing my partner, Bill Schroeder is. At the head of the pack, I'd say you and Jonathan Lucroy yeah. are uh, two of the best I've ever seen and giving up your time and uh, making sure these guys uh, get some of the things they need. And, and your two sons, your son and son-in-law, still uh, involved in the military, son Billy in the Army. He's in, the, in Seattle now, right? Outside Seattle? Yeah, outside of Tacoma in Fort Lewis. Uh in the infantry sergeant now and uh, Perry Perry King my son-in-law is a uh, MP in the uh, in the uh, the army he was over in Afghanistan for a year as a uh, prison guard over there and hats off to both of them very proud of them both I stay connected to uh, functions like the the Fisher House the USO by the way, they've done a great job with the USO facility at, at Mitchell Airport. It's always packed in there, always do a great job. Nice setup. You know, they have the uh, the first Fisher House groundbreaking here in uh, Wisconsin, here in Milwaukee. That's on Tuesday at the VA Center. Munchers are going to be over there showing our support. Full count to Bonifacio starting this uh, this seventh inning and a line drive to Braun. He's got it. You got some souvenirs from the special forces, huh? Yeah, special force arm pads. This is the kind of thing that they Sweet. wear over there when they're uh, on active duty. Check that out. Gave me one and uh, you know gave a bunch of them to send down to the clubhouse to give to some of the players that uh, are. Interested in uh, you know supporting the military certainly Luke Roy got one a bunch of the guys are, are really into that kind of thing and uh, I'll cherish it. Yeah, I have a little bit of an area down in my basement where I'm gonna Display this proudly It's very cool and We appreciate all military members out there the Veterans and uh, the active members you always have a home here at Miller Park A swing and a miss by Lake, and it's 0 and 2. 7 nothing Cubs. Not a good day at the ballpark for the Brewers. Kind of fell apart on them in that sixth inning. It was a 2 nothing game with two outs in that six until Rizzo went deep and then couldn't get the Cubs out. Peralta couldn't finish. And then Duke gave up three consecutive hits. Unusual for Zach Duke, who has been fantastic this year. There are days like this every now and then. Brewers had a lopsided win yesterday. At one point, led 11 to 2. They won 11-5. The way the Brewers are swinging the bat, though, seven runs not insurmountable. They've been averaging about six and a half runs a game 
during this stretch of success. They got to get the Hamill first. They haven't had been able to do that at all this year. And both of the starts for Hamill against Milwaukee coming right here at Miller Park. Cubs have been tough on the Brewers this year. They really have. As good as the Brewers have been. Two outs. Zach Duke strikes out Junior Lake. Coming in, the Brewers uh, have won four out of seven. Now the Brewers won the first series against the Cubs here at Miller Park. Lost a series two out of three at Wrigley. Series number three here as Anthony Rizzo steps in. And he has had the big bat today. Two, two run home runs for Rizzo. Ten homers. 28 runs batted in now. Both of his home runs coming with two strikes. Bouncer over to Overbay and Duke retires Rizzo to end the inning. Now we invite you to stay tuned for the seventh inning stretch. It's brought to you by the all new Chevy Silverado. Seventh inning stretch. Brought to you by Fisher Nuts, the official nut of your Milwaukee. Park carsuit.com trivia today. Who are we? Is the question. I played in Milwaukee 64 and 65 as well as 74. My son played with the Cubs. And there it is. Felipe and Moises Alou. Good one today. Good carsuit.com trivia. Yeah, Felipe spent a little time in Milwaukee. A couple of tours here. First with the Milwaukee Braves. And uh, Moises had a terrific career. Played nearly 2,000 games, a 300 hitter in his career in the big leagues. Carlos Gomez leads off for the Brewers as we play in the bottom of the seventh inning. Jason Hamill just rolling along here. He's working on a three hit shutout. He's hit two batters. Only 90 pitches as he starts the seventh inning. He's had a little trouble getting through six. In his last three starts, not the case here today. He's been on his game. And those shadows make it even tougher when a guy is pitching well. Hasn't seemed to bother the Cubs today with seven runs on eight hits. But Hamill, for the most part, putting it where he wants it. Hamill's wins this year have come against the Pirates. He's beaten them twice. He beat the Brewers in April. Had a win over the Yankees and the Diamondbacks. This guy's something else. I mean, the way he pitches against Milwaukee. I mean, it's no fluke. I mean, his earned run average is around three coming in. I think he continues to pitch like this. His game was going to pay off that one year contract. Yep. Yeah, he stays out there every fifth day and he knows he's going to get the ball 
with the Cubs. That is a foul ball, not by much. Wei Chung Wong might be making an appearance in back to back games. You see his interpreter there, Jay Shi. Keeping a close eye on him. Sporting the sweet khakis. Brewers have played so many close games this year. Matter of fact, they lead the major leagues in one or two run games. I haven't seen many lopsided affairs either way, like we saw last night and what we have going right now. Seven nothing. There's a strike call. Gomez is out. Putting his 10 game hitting streak in jeopardy today. And Brewers have not been able to mount much at all. I mean, there's a pretty good change up right there by Jason Hamill, right at the bottom of the strike zone. And you see Baker pull it up, making it look good over there for Andrew Campos. Brewers have only had one at bat with a man in scoring position today. That was the fourth inning. Chris Davis has one of the three hits. All three hit singles against Hamill. Davis extended his hitting streak to nine with that single. He tried to stretch it into a double and was thrown out. Final game of the series tomorrow afternoon. And then the Brewers will welcome the Twins to town. Twins will be coming from New York. Two games with the Twins, and then we go to Minnesota for two more. Another long road trip for the crew. Yeah, it'll start in Minnesota. It'll go to Pittsburgh and then to New York to take on the Mets. Got your clothes back from the cleaners. Hand washing them in the creek, actually. There's a line drive to center, Lake. And out number two. Hand washing them in the creek. Yeah, huh? in the creek. Since the weather's so nice. Who do you have doing I'm that for you? I'm about halfway through. Who do you have doing that for you? Just read the card off. Hey, Carlos Gomez and the Brewers. <laughs> Carlos Gomez leads the Brew Crew against his former club Monday and Tuesday when the Brewers meet the Minnesota Twins in the club's annual border battle. Tickets start at just $9. Call 414-902-4000 or visit Brewers.com today. That's the series I was just talking about. <laughs> Your flawless streak of promo reading has come to a crashing halt. Yeah. I was just startled by, you know, you wash your clothes at the creek. <laughs> That's awesome. You know, I'm from a very modest background, you know, yeah, right you are. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a country boy. Mm -hmm. If you only knew, I do know. <laughs> <laughs> I know your people. You know, they're very honest with me about I know, you. I know. you know that it's killing my image. Two outs for Jeanette. Could be Hamill's last inning. Figure it will be. And Taria has a little bit of activity in his bullpen. Pitch count now at 106 as Jeanette chased one. Three and two the count. Chase ball four. Brewers aren't going to be around Miller Park much, that's for sure. 
to your original point. They've got a ton of games on the road coming up and going to be tested severely. There's a shot and a base hit. Even with the infield rotation in place for Jeanette, he slaps one past Bonifacio. And one hopper right into left field. Bonifacio made a valiant effort on it. I can play just about anywhere. He's somewhere in the shade over there. There he is. Just a little bit late getting to it. Second hit for Jeanette. And Renteria has seen enough pitch count getting into uncomfortable territory for him, I guess. So he's going to take him out. Well, maybe he's not. He hasn't taken the ball just yet. He wants to. Hamill's not giving it to him. <laughs> I mean, he does have a shutout going. And the Cubs have used their bullpen a lot. Renteria is going to let him stay. I think he had it in his mind to make the change there. Maybe he just wanted to look Hamill eye to eye, which is not easy for a guy yeah, well, of Renteria's height. Yeah. I think if he wanted to make a change, he really wanted to make a change. He would have done it before he got to the mound. He just wanted to see how he was doing. You're right. He certainly deserved the opportunity, does Hamill, to try and get out of his own mess here. It's just about as much of a mess as he's been in today with a base runner. Well, it's 7 nothing. Don't see pitchers. Typically come out of games in the middle of an inning when they have a shutout going. Mark Reynolds with Jeanette at first. So you're saying maybe managers they they like to come play the hero sometimes. Like I'm your buddy. Yeah. I'm gonna leave you in here. I'm out here for you to talk me into keeping you out on the mound. <laughs> what are you gonna tell me? A lot of times it's not what they say, it's how they look out there in the mound. But, you know, Hamill, no interest in leaving this game. I guess if Hamill had just met him halfway and handed him the ball, he would have had no choice. That's a good sign. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good call. I'm out. I'm done. And that's happened before. Yeah. Reynolds in the right playable Sherholtz on the track and it pays off for Renteria seven shutout innings for Jason Hamill. A scoreless inning last night gave up just one hit one strikeout and said earlier today that he benefited from the simulated game that he threw on Wednesday said it was great to throw against live hitters the opportunity to work on his breaking stuff and Ron said it certainly paid off that Maldi came in 
said he was hitting his spots, his breaking ball, his curveball were all very good. And to have come out with a scoreless inning, he hopes will give him more confidence moving forward. And he has some cheerleaders in the uh, Brewers dugout. Kyle Loesch and Matt Garza were cheering for him in Mandarin with the help of Jay Shi, you know, telling him let's go and giving him some confidence. And uh, Wong said he loved getting that kind of support and says he can always hear Garza loud and clear from the dugout. That's, uh, that's cool. And there is a big brother relationship with those pitchers and Wong. They know he's in a tough spot and Wong going to get a chance to pitch in back to back games here with the Cubs leading seven to nothing. Some other changes here as we go to the eighth inning. As Wong takes over on the mound, Elian Herrera comes in on the double switch to play third base. Reynolds, who made the last out, he is out of the game. And there are the numbers for Wong. And I think the other part of that simulated game rock was, you know, his last outing, he couldn't finish. That was the game over. Bay had to come in and. I mean that's not a memory you're trying to right. to keep there. So the simulated game probably allowed him to hit the reset button a little bit. And uh, Rennie was thinking about having Wong come out in yesterday's ball game in the ninth inning, give him two innings, but he really wanted to have him finish with a on a high note, you know, something to feel good about. So he had a scoreless inning in yesterday's game. Didn't want to risk having him get into any problems in the ninth. So that might help him here today. Starlin Castro leads off that rule five uh, draft pick the reason that's in place and you can ex explain this better but it's there to protect the player you know clubs used to be able before that uh, was put in place used to be able to take a guy off a roster move him wherever they wanted you could never kind of escape the organization when a you ball, were on the a ball a ball it's not quite, really not fair to a player it's not, it kind of a, a lateral move isn't really fair to him. So what they do that rule five situation is if you pluck them off the minor league roster you have to keep them in the big leagues. And that's a difficult thing to do uh, for most teams and you know the Cubs did it last year with Hector Rondon. Yeah. Although the Cubs were never in any contention which was a little bit easier to protect a guy like that. Now they're he's their closer. So the Brewers are going to are hoping for that kind of success. You know with uh, with Wong this year but it's going to be more difficult because the Brewers are in first place. Uh, you, you need everybody on your active roster and so we'll see how Wong goes and as his confidence grows and his development grows you hear a lot about development maybe he can be a factor maybe he can help you he could be that long man he's slated to become a starter now after this season the Brewers can put him back in the minor leagues and he can continue on in the organization. As sure holds lines one to left, two up, two down for Wei Chung Wong. Well, if he could get a couple of innings out of him today, these are the kind of moments that Wong that you need Wong you're in a lopsided game one way or the other and he's got to pick up some innings. So the guys you're using in close games especially when you have a lead don't have to pitch. And especially Will Smith you need to really protect him he has thrown a lot he's been very effective and there's really no reason why you should have to throw him in a game like last night or tonight or I should say today and you know, because Wong is on the roster and We'll give him some work. And probably Will Smith's going to be able to get through today without having to throw, unless the Brewers have a big comeback. Now well, Coglin pops it up. Segura is there, and a nice, easy inning for Wei Chung Wong. Three up, three down. Go to Cubs.
Brewer fan, that's for sure. It's been all Cubs in this one, leading seven to nothing. We're getting set for Brewers live post game on the way. Wong on consecutive appearances now, a one, two, three, eighth inning. B and Rock were talking about how difficult it is to to have a guy, a Rule Five player, especially in the bullpen right now. What's your take on how the Brewers move forward now? June first is tomorrow. Well, I'll tell you what. It talks about opportunity and development. This is a young guy that they feel can turn into a big big league starting pitcher and a very good one so what you want to do each time and each and every time out is have them go and have them give different opportunities but yet develop them you go out there with trying to accomplish something each and every time he goes out make it a learning situation well yesterday Ron Renicki not putting him out in the ninth inning building his confidence good eighth inning we'll see if he gets consecutive here before this one is out we'll cover this ball game we're going to hear from Ron Renicki get inside the clubhouse as well Brewers Live is on the way following this ball game, right? All right, Craig and Augie, thank you. There's Wong. Looks like he's poised to return for a second inning in the ninth. And a good time to do it. Justin Graham will come out of the Cubs bullpen. He's one of their top relievers. And Graham making his 26th appearance, entering a 7 nothing Cubs lead. Yeah, it leads the team with those 25 relief appearances. And uh, Rick Renteria not messing around. He's going to bring out one of his best here with a seven to nothing lead in the eighth inning. Lyle Overbay leads off. Cubs haven't been in a winning position in a few days. Remember, they were shut out in back-to-back -back games on on Wednesday and Thursday against the Giants. I beg your pardon. On Tuesday and Wednesday, and then they had Thursday off. So this hasn't been a uh, stretch of a lot of work for their winning version of their bullpen. Their closer, Hector Rondon, is not with the team right now. He's on paternity leave, expecting the birth of a child. Have not heard any word on that today. You get three days. That tomorrow will be day three for Rondon. Former Texas Ranger Justin Grimm traded to the Cubs. Grimm last worked on Wednesday through 29 pitches against the San Francisco Giants. Cubs have an off day Monday again. They have Thursday off. They'll have off Monday. They got the Mets and the Marlins coming up on their next home stand beginning Tuesday. Finishing up the last leg of a long road trip San Diego San Francisco and Milwaukee. The Cubs have uh, played three fewer games than Milwaukee. Of course the Cubs have had rain issues and weather problems and uh, now they have uh, another day off Thursday off now Monday off it all adds up I mean it equals that at some point who is there uh, in the beginning of a long stretch of games they're going to have uh, next Monday off in New York Overbay strikes out for the first out of the inning This is a stretch of 10 in a row for the Brewers without a day off. They just finished a stretch of 17 straight, I think, or 13 straight without a day off. And after Tuesday's game against Minnesota here at Miller Park, the Brewers have just three games at home in a 20 day stretch. So they'll they'll be here for that red series. June 13 14 and 15 then they don't come back until June 23rd and then things finally start to turn their way as far as home games go they get into late June and July they get through that stretch in pretty good shape you know you, you keep your 
your lead you, you, you stay above 500 and then you know the schedule turns a little bit more favorable for the team so it's going to be a rough stretch for him a lot of road games playing some good competition. Elian Herrera batting for the first time came in on the double switch last inning. Now the Brewers have been a good road team this year. Matter of fact, they are five games over on the road, 16 and 11 away from Miller Park. It's one of the better records in the National League as Herrera strikes out. Baker blocked it, secures the K at first. Two outs. I remember in spring training, everybody talking about what a difficult stretch it's going to be for the Brewers the month of April, how important that was. All they did there was go 19 and 8. Much better May this year than last year. Right now, they're 13 and 14 in May. Well, they win six games in May last year. That's right. That was a rough May, and there's a the rough schedule we're talking about with all those road games and just those three games against the Reds. In between two road trips. Yeah, six wins in May last year. Only the Giants with a better record in the National League than the Brewers to start play today. The Brewers have a four game lead over the Cardinals in the Central. Segura bouncer to Rizzo. And a race to the back. Grimm is there, and the side is retired. Three up, three down to the night. Cubs lead 7 0. Five in the six all came with two outs. That sets it up for tomorrow. Our Miller Lite What's on Tap. Check the airtime there at 12:30 on Brewers Live. And then 1:10 first pitch. Jeff Sabarja, the top ERA man in the National League, despite just one win against the six and one Kyle Loesch. That is a terrific pitching matchup tomorrow afternoon. Loesch with those six wins is two wins shy. Of the National League lead, Zach Grinke and Adam Wainwright are eight game winners. Lowe's tied for fourth in the National League in victories. Wong back out there to start his second inning, trying to get through two innings in the big leagues for the first time in his brief career. And Kyle Lowe's going to make his 22nd career start against the Cubs. And they know each other well. Yeah, Lowe's pitching with the Cardinals for many years. He spent some time with the Reds in the Central Division. And of course, his second year with the Brewers. The former Cardinal, a world champion with St. Louis. Which, respectfully, he doesn't bring up much around here. That was 2011. Tough one to take. Cardinals beating the Brewers in that NLCS. 
He's a pro's pro, Kyle Loesch. Yep, he's been a great addition. Yes, he has. Right. More, got ways than, more ways than one. There's a swing and a miss. So Wong with a strikeout and has retired four straight. And maybe just the confidence boost he needed yesterday's scoreless inning. And able to get one by Baker up in the strike zone. And Wong will get it up there at about 93, 94. Good fastball that time. Here's Darwin Barney. By the way, the Cardinals won today. That game is final. St. Louis shut out the Giants two to nothing. Michael Walker combined with three others. Rosenthal saved it. Walker went six shutout innings. Cardinals cooling off the red hot Giants. San Francisco had won four straight, eight of their last ten before their loss today. And Brewers coming into play today with a four game lead over the Cardinals. There's a shot to third right at Herrera. Winds it up and throws Barney out. Two up, two down for Wong. A lot of finals in in the big leagues today. And a baseball night at America on Fox tonight. Clear the way for national television with all these day games. Orioles beat the Astros today 4 1, their first win of that series. Tillman got the win. Got the Indians over the Rockies 7 to 6. Rockies have cooled off a little bit after their hot start. White Sox over the Padres, or check it, Padres beat the White Sox today. I beg your pardon. Four to two. That was in Chicago. Blue Jays back at it. Twelve two winners over the Royals. Kansas City is three under and struggling while the Blue Jays lead the American League East. Yankees top the Twins and the Nationals ten two over the Rangers. Everything else is either later tonight or nearing an end. <laughs> Mets and the Phillies are playing extra innings again. <laughs> Golly. They always play extra innings. Yep. <laughs> extra innings last night. Fly ball, right field. Braun coming in. Braun lays out. Can't get it. Ruggiano with extra bases. On his way to third with a triple. Good effort by Braun in a lopsided game. He was trying to get that last out for Wong just out of his reach. And that ball just slicing away from Braun as he tried to get there. Good effort by him. Seven to nothing lead. Why not try and make a nice catch? Help the young man out there in the mound. Pinch hit triple for Ruggiano. First hit allowed by Wong. And two outs, runner at third. It'll be Bonifacio. They got a good series going on. Bonifacio's former club, Miami. They're trailing the Braves today in the eighth inning, 6 5. Braves have a one game lead over the Marlins in the National League East. And the Braves lead again today. They beat them last night. They were in a dead heat as of yesterday. Might be fun to check in on the Rays and the Red Sox tonight. Yeah. Keep an eye on that. See what might uh, little dust ups might come might come up. That game will be underway shortly. You know who's pitching for Tampa Bay tonight? It's Jake Odorizzi. Yeah. Former Brewer farmhand, the guy they, one of the players they traded to Kansas City to get Zach Grinke. He gets the start tonight.
The one two. Bouncing ball up the middle and an RBI for Bonifacio. Cubs add to it. It's eight nothing now. Bonifacio with his second hit gives him 14 RBIs for the season. That'll bring up Junior Lake. It's amazing when you look at those, those standing as the American League East. Boston and Tampa Bay bringing up the rear. Tampa Bay in last place right now. They lost four in a row. Eight and a half games behind the Blue Jays. It's, it's hard to believe. Yeah, it is. Boston was in last, but they've won five straight. Finally hit a hot streak here. Boston's been. A major disappointment to start the year. Brewer swept him early in the season. At Fenway, the reigning world champs. Brewers have done well against the East. Lake to Segura. He'll go the easy way, and that'll retire the side. So Wei Chung Wong gets through two innings for the first time in his career. Last call for the Brewers. For the home team today, the Brewers down eight nothing, and the Cubs going to use this opportunity to get a hobbled pitcher back on the mound, Pedro Strope, who was just activated prior to yesterday's game on the disabled list since May seventh. Former Ranger, Oriole. Traded from Baltimore to the Cubs last year. Pedro Strope will have the night. Yeah, he's got a good arm. He's got a good breaking pitch. Question is, is he going to be able to throw strikes? Eight walks, 15 punch outs in 12 and two thirds innings. He has allowed a couple of home runs, but a big arm for Pedro Strope. There was a talk that Strope could settle in as the closer this year. They found their closer, I think. And Rondon, he's a good one. Logan Schaefer is going to pinch hit for Ryan Braun here in the ninth. Then Lucroy. And then Gomez. Brewers try to wipe the deck clean, and then the rubber game tomorrow, barring a miracle comeback here in the ninth inning. Behind Kyle Loesch. I'm not sure why you know, Ryan Braun is getting pinch hit for it here. I'm not sure. Schaefer lines one to left for the first out. Seemed like he was all right after that dive in right field. Got that oblique issue that he's dealing with, and I hope he's going to be all right for tomorrow. Maybe Ron Reddick using the opportunity to give Schaefer that bat. 
One day always leads to the next in this game. You never know when you find something. It's been a little bit of talk that the Cubs may set Starlin Castro tomorrow. He's do a day off himself. All sounds good in theory for a manager when he maps out the off days, but once you get to that day, you just don't know. Castro today with a double and a run scored, one out of three with a walk. The big bat today, Anthony Rizzo, two two run home runs, both off Peralta. Too bad he didn't get his off day today instead of yesterday. Brewers were hoping he may take three days off here in Milwaukee. Just to get him nice and fresh and ready to go for the next series. Yeah, Brewers have pitched him pretty well this year, except for today. Rizzo twice hit home runs with two strikes, changed the game. Six earned runs allowed by Peralta, his toughest day on the mound of the season. Willie will drop to four and five. Hamill was great again. Hamill's never lost to the Brewers and two outs away from improving the five and oh career against Milwaukee and an ERA in the low twos. He gave up seven hits in two starts. Something about the way he throws the baseball. Yeah. Given just about every one of the Brewers a tough time. Looks like the Brewers streak is going to come to an end of double digit hit totals nine in a row. Barring a rally here. Tied a franchise record by the way. The 83 Brewers and the 2011 Brewers also had streaks of 10 or more hits in nine straight games. The second out. Lucroy retired one for four today. Don't forget Brewers Live coming your way. Craig and Augie standing by. Sophia will have post game sound from the clubhouses. Gonna have a sit down with Ron Renneke tomorrow. We all love to play manager. All fans of baseball do. We get into a little managerial philosophy with Renneke, general philosophy about how he looks at a game, the statistics that he uses, the information that comes from above. We appreciate him doing that. He has a his fair share of microphones in his face every day. You know what I mean? So we thought one more wouldn't hurt him today. Hey, I know how he feels. <laughs> yes, you do. And that'll do it. Gomez strikes out. The Cubs win the second game of this series. A final of eight to nothing. Anthony Rizzo, the star today. Two homers, four runs batted in. Hamill now six and three with the win. Peralta drops to four and five. That'll set up the rubber game tomorrow between Loesch and Samarja. We check in with Craig Kishon. He's ready for Brewers Live. What do you have coming up, Craig? Well, Brian, we're looking forward to that pitching matchup, that's for sure, especially after the way this one went for the Brewers. All Chicago in this game will find out how Willie Peralta did. We'll hear from Ron Renneke, get inside the clubhouse. All next, Brewers Live is on the way.